I'm very excited about tonight. Thank you for coming along. I know it's a busy afternoon or evening for many of you. Uh, Australian National Review, how did this come about? Ironically, I was reading a book um, called Who Killed Fairfax? And some of you may have read that book. It's a fascinating book. And it's talking about the decline of print newspapers and how it's all just disappearing. And for some strange reason, reason, I decided to tell my GM that, guess what, we're going into the newspaper business. And, um, but really, it's, it's something I'm very passionate about. I'm sure many of you, um, who actually reads the newspapers still? And uh, uh, there's a few good publications out there, but unless we follow sport, uh, most newspapers, unfortunately, nothing more than entertainment value. Um, and I think, you know, there's this underlying story in the um, print media business, especially print newspapers, and I know there's some people here from the media industry, but there's this story that um, newspapers are dying and uh, they won't be around in the near future uh, and they're declining and they're losing readers in the droves. Now, part of that story is true. Uh, and they say that's happening because of digital media, it's happening because of the internet, it's happening because of Facebook and social media. And true, part of that is the reason. But I also believe there's another reason why newspapers are seeing a decline in, in revenue and a decline in readership. Uh, and that's because there's a lot of people in this country that are like me uh, that are sick of reading a, a lot of uh, nonsense that's in newspapers, a lot of crap and a lot of BS. And, uh, and so a lot of um, people that uh, have decided you can go onto the internet and go and do your own research and come across alternate news sites and especially the, the younger generation and that's where a lot of people have gone. Those people will continue to read newspapers if the newspapers provided a real diversified of opinion uh, and weren't owned or, or controlled or manipulated by the corporate elite or those with agendas that wish to manipulate the masses and, and idea, generally what they tend to do is dumb down the population and, and feed out news to the lowest common denominator. And I don't think that's healthy for a country. If we don't have an independent free press in our, in our society, then that's the beginning of the end of a civilised society. Does that make sense? And I know there's some publications in this country that claim to be independent and, and, and free, uh, but I don't know of too many. Um, there used to be, and there used to be some that could say they were proud of what they stood for, uh, but how many journalists these days are actually able to freely write an article that might be controversial and know that it'll run without it being editorial controlled, without the headlines being changed, without it not even being printed half the time, because most of our newspaper companies in this country are heavily editorial controlled and they're there to serve the agenda and I'm not always sure the agenda of those who serve are in the same interest of the everyday Australian. Who's following what I'm saying here? So out of those reasons we decided that, you know, um, what can be done about that? If we want to create social change and political change in this country, then we need to ensure that the average Australian is heard, the average Australian has a voice, and that we can have an agenda-free newspaper where we can actually be critical, because if it's not the journalists and the newspapers that are actually challenging governments or challenging the corporate elites, then who is going to hold them to account? And it used to be newspapers and journalists that would do that. But when they become complicit and controlled and manipulated, then that last chance of true democracy in society is lost. And I don't know about you, but you know, I read the newspapers in Australia and I can pick out every day what's propaganda and what's actually fact. And more and more of it's propaganda. And here's a challenge in our country, is the average Australian is so busy trying to make a living, so busy with their career and their family and their kids, that they don't have time to go out and do detailed research when they read the paper and check on the internet that that's actually true. They are trusting the Australian media to be telling them the truth. Now we might say that's naive, but surely they should be able to trust them to tell the truth. But unfortunately that's the challenge and because they're able to know that the average person doesn't have the time to check the facts, Therefore, they know they can even push blatant propaganda, blatant agendas, and get away with it because there's only a minority of people that are awake, a minority of people in this country that know what is really going on and see the game that's being played behind the game. Who's following what I'm saying here? Yes. And that's one of the reasons why we've decided to dedicate and invest into a print newspaper. 
It's not that uh, media is new to us. We, I started investing into media assets about four or five years ago. Um, and people are going, why are you investing into print media? We started buying magazines, etc. Um, because we wanted to really realize that as an educator, an educational organization, if we're going to increase the impact, we really need to be involved in media because media is a very powerful medium uh, to reach a lot of people. Um, so we started investing in that and about two years ago we started a, a, an independent news site, 21st Century News, which many of you will be familiar with, um, which is really predominantly, and Critic has been a big part of that as the editor for that and her team, uh, of developing news that's predominantly educational as opposed to entertainment, uh, predominantly to really help uh, people evolve and continue to learn and to create critical thinking. And the Australian National Review is really going to be an extension of that. One, we want it to be educational. We want to create uh, critical thinkers in this country. We want to create debate. Uh, we want to create controversy, which won't be hard, okay? <laughs> Expose a little bit of the truth and it's going to be very controversial. Um, but we're going into this, people go, well, you know, why would you start a, a print newspaper? I can't see how, um, I was speaking to some stockbrokers, they're going, well, how are you going to make money out of it? I'm going, well, I don't particularly care if I do. Does it make sense? Uh, the primary goal of uh, this newspaper is certainly not to make money. I know in the old school, and I know we have a very famous um, media proprietor who, who, was, uh, who grew up in Adelaide and now is one of the largest media owners on the, on the planet. Uh, I won't mention any names. <laughs> but if we go back to the old school, the old way of doing things is that if you build a media business or if you build any company, the sole goal to be, quote, successful was simply to make a lot of money. If you made a lot of money, you were successful. Now that might have worked in the 70s and 80s, but I don't know about you, but I know uh, certainly the Generation X and Generation Y uh, and, and uh, a lot of generations go, well, if you create a business and you simply make money, um, is that success? I don't think so. I think the ultimate part of a business should be to create a difference. Does it make sense? If it makes money, a bonus, because that will help continue to make a difference, but even if it doesn't, if you're willing to put your money where your mouth is and, and create something for a higher purpose, then that's what we should do. Does it make sense? So I think, you know, if certain media proprietors in, in this country, on this planet, had the same values, that it was about making a difference, then that would have made different decisions in their career. But when you create a cable network such as Fox News in America, that is so blatant propaganda, but because it's so cheap to produce, and one of the most profitable um, channels ever created, then you go, well, it's making money, and quote, that equals success. Well, I would say that if that's what we created, something that made money um, but was blatant propaganda, then I would consider that the greatest failure of all kind. Because not only failing yourself, but it's failing uh, the, the people of a country and the people uh, of the world. And we need to put the power back in the hands of the people because the world is heading in a very dangerous path and if not enough people stand up to that, then it's going to be too late. We're going to lose the so-called democratic societies we live in. Um, and we're going to lose what um, men and women in this country and others have fought and lost their lives to be able to create. And we're just going to give that freedom up without a fight. And already there's things and new laws that have been pushed in such as terror laws and things like that. Is that not some of the greatest um, political stunts that I've ever seen in a, in a democratic country Then I don't know what? Uh, we're witnessing. So these things are occurring because we have a complicit media, two major print newspaper companies that are complicit with the government on issues such as that. Where are the journalists in this country? Very few of them have stood up and wrote uh, investigative articles opposing some of these terror laws or opposing the propaganda about uh, what's happened in Ukraine with MH17, etc. Yes. Most of them are either naive and believe what they're fed from the Washington press releases and just take it as gospel, but don't make the effort to be a critical thinker. And this country needs critical thinkers. So you say, why are we starting a newspaper? Uh, one, it's because um, one, fed up with the um, propaganda, and two, we want to put a voice back there for people that actually know what's going on and uh, want to continue to be educated about what's going on and will question. Uh, because whenever we stop questioning, 
then our democracy will be lost. Who's following what I'm saying here? Okay. So I'm a little bit passionate about this project. I think it can make a big difference. We hope you know, many years from now we'll look back on tonight and go, this was a very significant turning point uh, in media in this country and in creating some social and political change in this country. Uh, and that's why we're excited about it. I know um, Critica is just going to ask some questions. Some journalists and, and um, clients have sent in questions uh, that they have about the newspaper. Uh, and we're happy to answer some of those questions. Thank you, Jamie. Firstly, how many news agents will the newspaper be in? The logistical questions. I should have you answer that one, Critica. Uh, it will be in all news agents, or pretty much 90% of news agents around the country. I think there's about 4,000 of them um, around Australia wide, so you'll be able to get it through the news agents. Uh, it'll cost $2.70. Uh, it launches in news agents November 1st, uh, which is Saturday week. Um, so tell your friends about it, go on social media, spread about it. We need as much support as we can um, because I think it's very critical that this succeeds. Um, because if independent, you know, and there's not too many newspapers starting up these days, if we don't get a, a new voice out there, uh, then, you know, nothing's going to change. Why are you launching a print newspaper when they are in decline? Um, you can answer this a couple, I've covered that in one way, but also uh, Warren Buffett's one of the world's um, most successful investors. He's buying hundreds of newspapers. Not because he thinks you necessarily make a lot of money from them, um, but he still believes newspapers do have a long, long will be around a long time. Um, maybe in a different um, medium and the different way that they'll do things, but things have to adapt. Um, so I don't think newspapers are actually dead yet. Um, you know, Fairfax was saying within three to five years that they may not be in, they may not print the Age and Sydney Morning Herald. I think they're surrendering too quickly. Uh, as I said, I think if they improve their quality of content, uh, then they would keep a lot more readers. And saying that, I think Fairfax is a much better publication than its competitor. Why do you think print newspapers are in decline? Um, well, the, the, obviously there's two things there. One thing is apart from the, the reducing in the quality of content is um, things that uh, companies such as Seek and realestate.com and carsales.com come along and you no longer have classified ads in newspapers. Newspapers were rivers of gold classified advertising. Now we go on the internet to find those things so we, there's not so many ads for cars, jobs, etc. in newspapers. That's the re reason they've lost the rivers of gold. Um, so that's really affected their profitability. But in saying that, the newspaper industry is still a very big industry. The sales might be declining and journalists are getting sacked left, right and centre. But that's because they haven't adapted to the new model. Um, we are a low cost um, digital media and now print media company, so we can produce uh, content at low cost. And as a result of that, I still think uh, newspapers, if done smartly, have a future. major newspaper companies are on one side, left wing, and the other is right wing, or right leaning, I would rather say. Where does the Australian National Review stand? It would have been a journalist that would ask that question. Um, you know, I'm not really into the left, right you know, thing. I think reality is some people on some policy issues are probably left wing, others on some different issues are right wing. So do we, are we just strictly right wing or strictly left wing? I think we're a bit of both at times. Um, I, I don't think, a, I think a newspaper can have opinion pieces, um, but I think opinion should be clearly labeled opinion or commentary. Uh, it, I think when it steps that line, um, and there was an article today that I read in the Sydney Morning Herald that um, apparently Murdoch said, kill Whitlam in 1975, not meaning to physically kill him, but basically to his editors to, to destroy his government. I just don't think that's appropriate. I don't think they should be overstepping the mark. You can ask questions and, and, and do stories, but I think you have opinion pieces for that, uh, and that should be clearly labelled, you know, uh, that what's opinions that people know. 
um, because otherwise then it's you know really pushing the boundary. So we're not going to be left wing or right wing. We'll probably you know um, we'll create debate either way. Um, you know, can you be down the centre? Well, if sometimes you're talking about things that are left wing and balanced out with the right wing, maybe you are down the centre. But we don't tend to be in either camp. Because really, if you want to create change, you need to really get people united, thinking about things, not dividing. There's plenty of newspapers that are very divisive. Actually, one a consultant said, I was in Fin Review recently, said you know, this week that if Channel 10 wants to actually uh, turn itself around and become financially successful, it needs to go extreme right wing. <laughs> so, you know, extreme right wing you know, works for Fox News and makes a lot of money, but, you know, once again, is that success? Where will, this, okay, okay. where will this newspaper sit? Um, I have no idea. On the news agent shelves, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think that's answering that question there. So yeah, we covered that one. And digitally, of course. We have a digital version. Yeah, of course. It will be available digital as well. Um, the website will be finished next week. Um, AustralianNationalReview.com. Uh, Any other questions? Will the newspaper hold keynote events like the Australian Financial Review and the Age? Yeah, I mean, we're already an education events company, so we, we have um, planned um, different events, particularly political events. Um, some of you will be familiar with uh, presidential candidate and senator Ron Paul from the United States of America. Um, so we're very excited to have him as one of the uh, contributors uh, in the newspaper. Um, you know, he is someone that uh, is really stands up for de democracy in America. Uh, is critical the US's typical foreign policy uh, which also affects us so we'll have people like that you can read about and I think you know they have valuable um, input and they know really know in more detail what's going on um, so you know when other people may be critical of the US administration that aren't from the US it's seen as, it's seen as anti-US but when the US senators are critical of their own country then people take more notice of it um, so um, we will be holding events. People like Ron Paul, we want to get out here as well, um, and you know, and have you know political events, or also there'll be business events, etc. Riding off the platform of uh, the paper. All right. So the last question is actually mine. Do you consider Rupert Murdoch to be one of your role models? <laughs> Do I consider Rupert Murdoch to be one of my role models? <laughs> I probably don't have to answer that question. You could probably take a guess. Um, no, I. I a lot of, I mean, I've heard Rupert speak, and he does quite speak. He does speak quite well. Makes a lot of sense on, on a lot of topics, but I just think it's a wasted opportunity. You have so much power and influence. Why not be a force for good in the world? Why not use that to create positive change? Um, why just want to make money and lose ethics or morals or integrity? If you want to go that far, where a lot of people would consider. That's happened. I remember I was invited last year to meet uh, Oprah Winfrey, and uh, I know for many of you, Oprah, you know, it was someone you consider a role model. I, I look up to her. I think what she's done in the world, you know, she's a force for good. And she was sharing a story, which um, I think was very critical. She was saying in her early television career with the Oprah Winfrey Show, back in the early stages, the shows were more like the Jerry Springer shows of the world, and the TV producers. Remember, once again when they quote success is about making money versus about making a difference. So they wanted her to start, and they started putting all sorts of guests on there. She was talking about how there was a, get, uh, a couple come on, a husband and wife and the husband's mistress on the show. And Oprah's like, I just don't know why people want to come on TV and embarrass themselves. <laughs> and um, the husband, without her knowing on live TV, uh, decided to inform uh, his wife that uh, his mistress was pregnant with a child. And Oprah felt so, so much humiliation for the wife. And after that episode, she said to the producers, she said, I would never ever do this sort of stuff ever again. If you want me to do that sort of stuff, then I'm out. And she said she decided that very day that her show would be a platform um, to be a force for good in the world. And that would be her guiding principle she would be a force for good. Now, as a result of that decision she made many years ago, that's how come you and I know who Oprah is. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, here's ironically, Oprah actually become incredibly financially successful as a billionaire. 
and she becomes so successful because she decided to stick to making a difference. And I think if we value that and our purpose behind something, then people pick up and resonate on that. And that's what inspires people. So I'd say, am I inspired by Rupert Murdoch or Oprah Winfrey? I'd definitely say Oprah is certainly an inspirational role model uh, as opposed to, say, uh, Rupert. No offence to Rupert. Thanks, Remy. That would be all. That's all the questions. Um, I'll open up. Does anyone have any questions in the room here? Happy to take some questions. So, uh, Peter? Well, actually, just a point of view, really. Um, I drove past the Age building on the way here. Oh, from the airport? No, on the way from the other end of town. And it is now about one, less than one storey high. It's been demolished to a pile of rubble there. And the Age was a, it was an icon building in this town for a long time. That's true, yeah. yeah they've moved over the road, but you know, the building's gone. Yeah, I mean, Fairfax has gone from being worth, I forget what they used to be worth, but $10 billion down to $1 billion at one stage. They're recovering a bit back to $2 billion. They've got a lot of structural change and they've got a lot of difficulties because they're coming from a very high cost base. I think newer companies that are starting with a low cost base can compete in that market. So uh, time will tell. Who really wants to ask a question? Yep, far away. Uh, two parts. Yep. I understand that it's a fortnightly. Uh-huh. Is, which is going to lead on to the first. What are you doing to promote it to ensure, obviously, it's ongoing success? Uh, other than tonight, because I'm sure we'll all go out and buy it, but with the shelf life of two weeks, what will someone want to buy it in the second week? Yeah, so what we'll be doing, first of all, we'll start off as a fortnightly newspaper. The goal will be in the short term to bring it to a weekly newspaper. Um, there is some advantages of a weekly newspaper versus a daily. Um, is that one, it has a longer shelf life, so advertisers, they get better value for money. A lot of advertisers are quite interested because also much less expensive for them compared to the other newspapers. What we'll be doing to promote it, obviously, to our, our database, uh, we'll be heavily promoting it. Uh, we have a lot of support there, hundreds of thousands of people uh, that support something like this. Um, social media will be the biggest part of it. We won't be running newspaper ads and other, other newspapers to promote our newspaper. <laughs> um, but um, social media, we believe that um, obviously you have to have the first edition out there for people to hear about. The fact it will be across all news agents around Australia, we're very thankful uh, for, for news agents because they are really the, the critical part to getting the newspaper out there. But I think, I, I believe it will spread virally, not just you know, the online version as well, because it will be something very different to what people are used to getting. Uh, and there's a lot of people, I can tell you now, mainstream media keeps pushing and framing things this way and they make out that everyone thinks that way. When you talk to most people, you see on Facebook, 90% you know, of comments are generally opposite to what mainstream media is pushing. They like to try and make people thinking, they try and move the conversation this way when people are really over this way, okay? Um, and every day in this paper? Uh, every, it'll be fortnightly initially and then weekly, yes. Um, if you see every, the daily newspapers, other than the Financial Review, which I think is a good publication for business, is most of them just don't have enough content. So they become very tabloid or very entertaining. Uh, and when there's no sport on much, there's not much reason to, to read them, okay? Make sense? Okay, one last question. How does one contribute, for example, to the health section? Yeah, if you want to be a contributor, um, you can email uh, articles and submit them. Um, we, you know, on our news site as well, we do have voluntary contributors, so you're welcome to submit articles, and if they're considered um, suitable, we can run them either in the print newspaper or uh, online. Um, we had a chance to meet Arianna Huffington of Huffington Post recently when she was in Australia, and she's someone else that I think is a role model uh, for what we're doing, and, and, um, and uh, she's someone that, you know, is happy for us also to provide articles, um, you know, for Huffington Post as well. So some of these new age media, you know, she's been a great example, Huffington Post, of new age media really doing things differently. Um, so there is role models out there to look at what can be done. Thank you for being here tonight. I appreciate it. Um, grab some more wine. I'll be around to have a chat.